Item number SCP-262 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Currently, SCP-262 is undergoing review and research to see if it is capable of being used by field agents in the acquisition of other SCPs. Monitored use by Commander-level authority is preferable. It is inadvisable to allow agents unsupervised uses of SCP-262 at this time. When not in use, SCP-262 is kept in a climate-controlled room at site, guarded by at least two Level 2 security personnel. SCP-262 is a light brown European military-style greatcoat from a period between the late 1500s to the early 1900s. It is without any specific designations or markings, leading researchers to believe it was an original archetype sample, intended to be submitted to military officials for approval as part of a new uniform design. The pattern was either rejected or lost because it was never implemented. It is made of wool and extends below the knee on most individuals. Carbon dating on the coat fibers have been inconclusive, placing the age of SCP-262 in the range of 6200 to 6400 years old. One explanation is that the wool used to create SCP-262 is perhaps thousands of years old, but the coat itself was cut, sewn, and assembled recently. SCP-262 is capable of manifesting numerous arms from within the dark inner lining. When worn, any subject wearing SCP-262 needs only to open the coat to materialize hands and arms which are somewhat under the subject's control. Most limbs are human in nature and vary in skin tones, length, and strength. A noted few include a reptilian-like scale tentacle some 4 meters or 13 feet long, four semi-transparent arm-like appendages made of cellulose over 10 meters or 33 feet long, with four fingers, two elbow-like joints and no wrists, the clawed paw of a large cat, possibly a cougar or mountain lion, several feet and legs that appear randomly. The space under SCP-262 is considered to be non-Euclidean in nature, and the coat itself divergent from normal dimensions. In one instance, Test Subject 402-M was told to put SCP-262 over his head. Upon doing so, SCP-262 fell to the ground as the Class D personnel disappeared under it. Some time later, fingerprinting of objects that have come into contact with the limbs of SCP-262 have identified one of the arms as that of Subject 402-M. Subjects properly wearing SCP-262 are able to manipulate these arms with a varying amount of control. Test Subject 301-F was able to perform multiple tasks at once even while unaware and blindfolded, leading researchers to believe that SCP-262 has both perception and awareness of its surroundings, even when the subject does not. Some believe SCP-262 to be fully sentient, due to observing SCP-262 playing a piano with two or more hands, though the test subject has had no formal training in music, defending itself subject from multiple attackers, several limbs fighting one another or even going against the subject's will. At times, when a subject attempts to smoke, a particular limb will remove the cigarette from the subject's mouth and then throw it away. At other times, a different hand will place a cigarette in the subject's mouth and light it, though the subject dislikes smoking. Acquisition SCP-262 came into the Foundation's care when the Administrator relinquished his ownership of the coat in the late 20th century. Because of his status, the Administrator is granted special rights which effectively allow him to remain silent about the origins of SCP-262, how he came to possess it, and how he has used it in the past. The Administrator released SCP-262 to the Foundation stating, in the right hands it could be extremely useful, in the wrong hands it could be extremely dangerous, in my hands it was becoming extremely dusty and moth-ridden and taking up far too much space in my closet. Addendum 01 Selected notes from further research regarding the properties of SCP-262. Case Study 262-11 Inversion of SCP-262 Trial 7 After putting on SCP-262 properly, Subject 722-M attempts to turn the right arm sleeve inside out as he removes his arm. Many disembodied voices cry in apparent pain. Subject 722-M is instructed to continue inverting the sleeve. Multiple arms emanating from within the lining of SCP-262 reach out and attack Subject 722-M. In an attempt to remove the coat, Subject 722-M tries to retract his arm, but in doing so, inverts the sleeve of the coat. 
A long cellulitic arm appears from the opposite inner lining, reaches around and up through the inverted sleeve, grasps subject 722's caught hand and pulls violently, the force of which dislocates the subject's shoulder and amputates the arm at the elbow. With SCP-262 in typical position, all emanating arms retreat and audible wailing of voices cease. Subject 722's wounds are treated, and his condition is inconsequential. Case Study 262-42 Placement of SCP-262 on a Mannequin Trial 1 SCP-262 is placed on an anatomically correct human male mannequin dressed in typical SCP personnel attire. After several minutes, a single human arm emanating from the inner lining of SCP-262 reaches up towards the mannequin's face. After several prods of apparent curiosity, the arm retreats and no further movement is recorded for the duration of the test. Trial 4 SCP researchers place SCP-262 over the head and shoulders of a similar, but different mannequin. After a few moments, SCP-262 fell to the ground with the entirety of the test mannequin disappearing below it. Addendum. It has been noted that a rigid wooden arm resembling that of the test mannequin has been witnessed emanating from SCP-262 since its trial. Case Study 262-307 Placement of SCP-262 on a recently deceased human being Trial 1 Research personnel put SCP-262 on the body of a recently deceased Class D personnel, recently terminated in an experiment with SCP. The body is whole, unscathed, and mounted into a seated position on a chair. After a few moments, a single human arm emanating from the inner lining of SCP-262 reaches up towards the body's face. After several prods of apparent curiosity, the arm retreats. After several more moments, the body which SCP-262 is on begins shaking violently. A popping and snapping sound is heard, and a deceased hands, visible at the end of the sleeve, suddenly retract. The body then stills. A human hand reaches up the back of the deceased's neck from the collar and pulls the head up into an upright position. Numerous hands and arms crisscross the chest and abdomen and straighten the body. Two cellulitic arms reach down the body's legs and grip the ankles. SCP-262 pulls the body into a standing position as other arms of cellulose come down each sleeve. SCP-262 continues by breaching containment and overpowering security. At the time, Mobile Task Force Epsilon-9 aka Fire Eaters, were present in the facility to provide reinforcements. Discharging their flame accelerators in an aggressive fashion, members of Mobile Task Force E-9 were able to corner SCP-262 in a blind hallway. When cornered, a hand from within SCP-262 pulled the coat up and over the head of the body it was using. SCP-262 collapsed to the ground with the body of the Class D personnel disappearing beneath it. It is unknown if the incident was caused by the will of SCP-262 or the will of the body of the recently deceased Class D personnel used.